This short video will show you how to solve a quadratic equation by the method of completing the square. So you can see the title here, completing the square. I've gone ahead and on this piece of paper, I've written out the steps to follow to do this. And I'll work through a couple of problems. I wrote these steps out just to save time and I will reveal them as we work the first problem. So I'll do two problems. The first one, it's a pretty straightforward quadratic equation. Matter of fact, if I was given this problem, I would solve it probably by just factoring. But let's go ahead and learn how to use the method of completing the square, because there are times when we need to use completing the square. Let me just say, in your future math, you will oftentimes use completing the square to do all kinds of different things. So there is this whole technique called completing the square. In this case, we're going to complete the square and then we're gonna go ahead and solve the equation. Later on in other math applications, you will complete the square in order to do other things. So completing the square is something that gets used many times in math. So it's good to understand how to do it. So in this case, we're given a quadratic equation. Looks pretty standard. I call this the squared term. I call this the middle term. And this is the number. And of course, normally when we solve a quadratic equation, we want zero on one side and everything else on the other. We're gonna see it's gonna be a little different for this method. So the first step is when you're given a quadratic equation to solve and we want to use completing the square, we have to put the equation into the proper form. And here in parentheses is the key. In this case, I actually want the number on one side by itself. If I was going to use factoring to solve this equation, this would be the proper form of the equation. But when I'm gonna use completing the square, I want to get this number by itself on one side. So in this case, I need to add 10 to this equation. Now you notice, you'll see why in a minute, I'm gonna still leave this gap here, even though I'm adding 10 to both sides. So the 10 ends up on the right-hand side. So now this equation is in the form that I want to start solving it. Now there's a second thing we have to check for before we actually start completing the square, and that's step two. You have to make sure that there is no coefficient on the squared term, right? So this is the squared term. You gotta make sure a coefficient is of course the number in front or the number multiplied by. We have to make sure there's no coefficient on the squared term. For the second problem I'm going to do, turns out I am gonna have a coefficient on the squared term. So for the second problem, you'll see what we have to do if I do have a coefficient. But for this problem, there's no coefficient. So I need to make sure about that. I cannot start the process of completing the square if there's a coefficient on my squared term. All right, these first two steps are sort of just making sure that this equation is in the form that we want. Now, here's the whole key to completing the square. This is just me, but what I do, I have a thing called perform special calculation on the middle term coefficient. So first of all, this is just the little name I've given it. I just call it the special calculation because we're gonna do a calculation. And it's gonna be done on what I call the middle term. So here's the middle term. And it's really looking at the coefficient. So what I'm gonna do is here, I would do it off to the side. I think I wrote it here. Now, 
the special calculation Sorry. Is my phone going off? Here's the special calculation. You take the middle term coefficient, you divide it by two, and then you square the whole thing. Now in this case, and at this point, I don't even care about the negative. All I care about is this number, this coefficient. So for this problem, my special calculation is, here's my coefficient. I divide it by two, and then I'm gonna square it. So my special calculation ends up being nine fourths. Now, once I do this special calculation, now I'm gonna add the special calculation to both sides. So I take this number, I'm gonna add it to the left-hand side, but of course you realize in the world of math, if you do something to one side of an equation, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna add nine fourths to both sides. Now, the reason this special calculation works is whenever you do the special calculation, what you're gonna have left, so I've got a trinomial here now, but as it turns out, this trinomial is actually going to be a perfect square trinomial. Now you may or may not know what a perfect square trinomial is, but I'm gonna show you the nice thing about a perfect square trinomial is it's very easy to factor. I am now gonna factor this trinomial and that's the fifth step. Factor the PST. This, when you, do, when you add the special calculation to both sides, this trinomial always ends up being a perfect square trinomial. And the way you factor a perfect square trinomial is first of all, it's gonna end up being one parenthesis and it's gonna be squared. So on the inside, you have the variable you're working with in terms of x. Then you take whatever the sign is in between your squared term and your middle term. In this case, it's a minus. So then that's what goes here. And then the second term in here is you take this number here whoops, and you take the square root of this number. The square root of nine fourths is three halves. So this is the way you affect, this is the way you factor a perfect square trinomial. So now for this equation, now I have to go over here. Let's go ahead and add these two together. I got a number and a fraction. I need to change this number to have a denominator of four. So 10 is really 40 over four. So this ends up being 49 over four. So now that I've factored the perfect square term the last step is just to solve the equation. Now, hopefully you've solved these kinds of equations before. You notice if I have a parenthesis squared equals a number, if I want to solve for X, I want to get rid of the squared. So when you have something squared and you want to get rid of it, what do you do? You take the square root. But of course, I need to take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root of the left-hand side, I just end up with X minus three halves. The square root of 49 over four is actually seven halves. And now hopefully you can see that it's pretty easy to finish solving this equation. I'm gonna add three halves to both sides. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Whenever you take the square root of a number, don't forget in the world of math, there's actually two possible numbers. 
either plus or minus seven halves. So now I'm gonna add three halves to both sides. So my solution is going to be three halves plus or minus seven halves. So I'm gonna have two solutions. The first one, let's add the seven halves. So three halves plus seven halves is 10 halves. 10 halves or 10 over two is five. And now if I take three halves and minus seven halves, that's negative four halves. Negative four over two is negative two. And then now I have solved this quadratic equation. And you can look and you can pretty easily see Matter of fact, if I had factored this trinomial, this also would be the solution. So once again, let's just step through what we did. First, our quadratic, put in the proper form, number one side by itself. So if we look back up here, we had to move the 10 to the other side and then make sure but there's no coefficient on the squared term. In this case, there wasn't any. If we then perform the special calculation where you take the coefficient of the middle term, you divide it by two, and then you square that whole thing. For this problem, it ended up being nine fourths. And then you're gonna add the special calculation to both sides. So we added nine fourths here, added nine fourths here. Then, Once you do that, on the left-hand side, you end up having a perfect square trinomial, which is here. So we factored it. It was this parenthesis squared. And once again, you put your variable here, whatever is here, either plus or minus, you bring it down. You take the third term and you take the square root and that's why it goes here. So then you have a parenthesis squared equals a number Take square root of both sides, and then you finish solving it. All right, let's do one more problem as an example. You'll have a little twist to it. But if I was going to try, if I, I was asked to solve this equation and I want to go ahead and use the method of completing the square. So first of all, I want to put the number on the other side by itself. So I'll go ahead and add 11 to both sides. Oh, let me leave some room in here. Although in this case, there's actually gonna be an extra step. Second step, make sure there's no coefficient on the squared term. Well, turns out you have a coefficient here. So I cannot complete the square with this four here. So I need to get rid of it. I don't want there to be a coefficient. So what I can do is, you know what I can do? If I divide both sides by four, then 4x squared divided by 4 is x squared. 12x divided by 4 is 3x. And then on the other side, I have 11 over 4. So now my equation is in the proper form. So I now need to do my special calculation and I did, wasn't aware of this, but this is gonna be the same special calculation as the previous problem because my middle term coefficients are three. So you divide it by two and you square it. So it's nine fourths. Then once you have the special calculation, you add it to both sides. Then the left-hand side, I can now factor as a perfect square trinomial. So once again, the formula is, here's your variable. Since it's a minus here, minus comes down here, I take the square root of nine fourths. 
which is three halves. On the right hand side, I can add these two fractions together. It's gonna to be 20 over four, which is actually five. So now I wanna solve for X. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get X minus three halves equals plus or minus square root of five. And to solve for X, if I wanna get X by itself, I add three halves to both sides. Turns out this is my solution. Three halves plus or minus square root of five. So looking at this now, this is actually a problem that factoring would not work. The other way that a lot of people would solve this is by using the quadratic equation. And if you use the quadratic equation, you would also get this answer. But here we've shown how to solve this by completing the square. So completing the square is really these, really completing the square is these steps here. And completing the square is something that you'll have to do many times to solve various kinds of math problems. In this case, we did it in order to solve this quadratic equation.